My name is Jason Bach. I'm a principal consultant with Magenic, and I'm also a Microsoft MVP. And today I'm going to show you how you can use an assembly that comes from, this, from the Mono project called Cecil. And this assembly allows you to load another assembly from disk and then change things in the assembly, like adding types, removing methods from a type, changing a methods implementation, and so on. And then you can save that assembly back to disk. The key thing to take from this Dimecast is this will allow you to remove code from your application and automatically insert it into your assembly as a post-build process. Now I'm going to use console windows here to show you how this works, but you can imagine taking this idea, making a custom MS build task, and put that in as a post-build process in your project file. So the method I have here, it's a pretty trivial method, and all it does is it takes the arguments and gets their values as strings, concatenates them all together, and returns the value. But let's say we were on a project where we as developers were requir required to send information to the console to say what the method was doing. So at the start of the method, we have to say the method has started. When the method is finished, we say we're done down here. When we throw an exception, we have to say an exception was thrown. Okay. Now, let's say we also check all of our arguments, the, the reference type arguments, for null. And if they are null, we throw the argument null exception. So that's what I'm doing for x and for this parameter wacky as well. Now all this stuff is not that hard to do as your typical .NET developer. Okay, there's no real magic going on here. This is pretty straightforward stuff. But it's trivial stuff that we have to do over and over again. So it's just easy to, to mess it up. It's easy to forget that we need to do it. And we'd really just like to forget that we ever need to do this type of stuff and make it automatic. Okay. So where we would like to go is something like this, okay. where we say for the classes we want tracing or for the methods we want tracing, we put this trace attribute on the method. And for those arguments that we want to have a not null check, we put this not null attribute there. Now, you may notice that for this argument, I have the not null attribute on it. This is just to show you that you can't specify for an attribute that's targeted only for a parameter that it should only be for reference types or value types. Okay, we have to differenti differentiate this later on during the code injection process. Okay. But all we have for an imp implementation is that one line of code and nothing else. So later on, all of that code is going to be put into the method. Now, if I use this method in the arguments class as is, I'm not going to get a lot out of it because C-sharp doesn't care anything about those attributes. It's just going to put them into the assembly, and that's it. We have to actually do something to reflect upon those attributes being there and then doing something about it. So in my program, if I actually just use the arguments class and its implementation for combine, and I pass it in a null argument here, I'm going to get a null reference exception. Furthermore, I'm not going to get all the tracing that I'd like. So let's compile all this code. And then I'm going to go to Windows Explorer, take that executable, and put it into this directory. This directory contains the injector, the application that will put all the code into a target, the console window, console application we just made. So let's go down to the command window, let's go to this directory, and let's, let's run Cecil injected as is. Okay, we just get the output, and then the second time we call it, we get the null reference exception, no tracing, no argument null checks. Okay. Now let's run the injector on the injected assembly. Ignore the error message here. This is illustrating that you can use Cecil as a code analysis type of tool to check for things such as the fact that in WCF, you can't have a one-way operation 
that returns a value. Okay. You can take a look at how I did this later on. Um, but now that I've done all my uh, method injection stuff, let's run the executable again. And now you see that I have the tracing there, and the second time that I run the method, I have an argument null exception. So how does this work? What I'm going to show you now is the Cecil code that I wrote to um, check for a null argument. You can look at how I did um, the tracing in the code. And all the code is available on my website at jasonbach.net. Go to my resources page and the section where I have all the talks that I've done. If you find the reflection talk, you'll see the zip file there. All the code's there. Okay. So if I go to Cecil Injector and I look at the program, in the main method what I'm doing is I'm taking the first argument and loading that as an assembly using the assembly factory. And this returns me an assembly definition. If you've done any reflection code, you know that you get an assembly and then you get types and then you get method infos and so on. Okay? In Cecil, you'll get an assembly definition, a type definition, a method definition. So that's the naming convention they use. Once I'm done with everything, I'm going to save out that assembly. So let's take a look at what I do between loading it and saving it. Let's go to adding code. Okay. Now, in my assembly, I get all the types from the main module. And then once I get that type for each type, I get all the methods, both just the methods and also the constructor methods. I add tracing and, and not null checks. Let's look at the not null check. And here's the key part of the code that I want to show you. It starts with the for each loop. For all the parameters in that method, I first look and see, is it not a value type? Because value types will always be not null. So I just look for reference types. And then I see, does it have any custom attributes? And if it has at least one, then I want to see, well, does it have my custom attribute not null attribute. If that's the case, then I get the sill worker and I from the I also get the instruction collection. Okay. The worker is used as basically your IL generator, if you want to think of it that way. Okay. And this allows me to actually put opcodes before or after a particular opcode. Okay. So I want to keep track of the first opcode that I actually found in the method, and I want to put all my stuff before it. And all I need is five opcodes. I first load that argument. I then check to see if it's not null by using brtrue underscore s. If the argument's not null, I'm going to jump right to the first opcode that I actually found in the method. If it's null, then I'm going to use load string giving it the name of the parameter that I have, calling new obj, which will create me a new object, and the one I'm going to create is an argument null exception. Okay. Once I have that new object, I just throw it. And that's all I have to do to inject code into my assembly that will automatically do a not null check for me. Okay. So I encourage you to take a look at the rest of the code so you can see how the tracing's done and also how I do that code analysis with the the WCF one-way operation. Okay. And I hope that this has motivated you a little bit to see how you could potentially take this idea and expand upon it and do all sorts of things in your code that you know is repeated over and over in your application and move that somewhere else where it can automatically be, automatically be injected into your assembly. So that will reduce the, the time that it takes a developer um, to add new features into an application and only focus on the code that he or she needs to write to satisfy a requirement from the user. So thank you for your time and take care.